It's always exciting when a new tool lands in the workshop, but when it's a whole new type of tool, it can generate an extra level of buzz. The Handboost C1 is a wireless handheld device which, when being held, to a nerd like me, feels like I'm brandishing a sonic screwdriver. But this isn't a screwdriver, this is a cutter, and with its blade vibrating at 40 kilohertz, this isn't a sonic cutter, it's an ultrasonic cutter. So let's see how this performs, is it going to end up on my tool wall, or does it not quite cut the mustard? Ultrasonic cutters have been around for decades, but it's only fairly recently that they've become more compact, more affordable, and general consumer facing. It feels like the C1 from Handboost may be able to cut through a lot of frustration in the general maker world. I should mention before we get stuck in that Handboost did supply me with this unit, however it came with no prerequisites, they're not paying me and this is not a sponsored video. They have no control over how I cover it or what I say, and as always, this is all my own personal experience and opinions. Now with that disclosure out of the way, let's take a look. This battery operated device features a 30 degree angled scalpel like blade at the front, which vibrates at up to 40,000 times per second. Think of it like an electric toothbrush with a bite. It's marketed to a range of hobbyists and makers, from leather work and wood sculpting to paper craft and, of course, us, those who get their kicks out of the perfect first layer, 3D printers. With its blade vibrating so fast, but by such a small amount, it in theory allows you to cut through solid material like a hot knife through butter. Handboost claims that this can cut through a range of different materials, including leather, PVC, paper, acrylic, rubber, gypsum, PCB, wood, EVA, foam, and a range of 3D printing materials, including PLA, TPU, and resin. For us 3D printers, there are two primary use cases for this. Easily removing stubborn support material, which would otherwise require fiddly work with wire cutters, scalpels, and pliers, and just cleaning up and refining rough edges of prints. Let's give this a test and see how it performs. It comes in a nice simple hard case which contains the cutter, as well as an absolute ton of spare blades and grubs which we'll look at in a minute, a blade safety cover, and a charging cable. Now the instructions say that the charge time should be around 2 hours, but the initial charge for me took more like 3 and a half hours, and the subsequent top ups weren't lightning fast either. That said, First charges do usually take longer, and I'm not sure that the power brick I'm using is that efficient. Once you are charged up though, you should be getting 2-3 to three hours of cutting time out of it, which for many use cases is more than enough cutting between charges. It charges up via a USB-C port in the base under a cover, and also down there we'll find an Allen key which we'll look at in a second. Before we use it, we need to fit one of the many blades it came with, but luckily this is quick and easy. All you need to do is untighten these two grubs at the top here with the allen key we got out of the base, slot in one of the blades this way round, and then tighten the grubs back up again, and we'll pop the allen key back in the base. So let's give it a try. Here are two identical models with identical support material which has unfortunately fused slightly with the models. Without the C1, with problematic support material, I'd ordinarily probably try to snap off anything that was weak enough to do so without risking damage to the print with either my hands or a pair of needle nose pliers. I'd then use some cutters to trim away anything left, and finally use a scalpel and a deburring tool to neaten up the resulting surface. Now let's try with the C1. You power it on with the power button here, and then you've got three strength modes. It is pretty much silent, but as the blade comes in contact with the thing you're cutting, it lets out a faint but high-pitched noise, which I find faintly reminiscent of a drill at the dentist, albeit a lot quieter. With this ultrasonic blade, I can cut the support material straight off, resulting in a nice clean cut. The built-in LED at the front is a nice touch to make it easier to see what you're cutting, but much like my common complaint with 3D printers, it would be nice if it was a bit brighter. The process definitely feels less erratic than removing support material with more traditional tools, and whilst you're generally working slower, as it requires fewer passes, it seems to take less time overall.
Now one issue that can occur when you're doing this, especially with a thicker print, is if you're cutting particularly slowly with the blade already partly inside your print. If you're cutting at depth for an extended length of time, the friction of the blade's vibrations quickly builds up heat, and with thermoplastics, this can cause it to start bulging or even melting. So rather than keeping the blade in there and trying to cut through in one long go, remove the blade frequently to let the blade and the print cool down before you continue. I definitely need more practice using this and to take my time more, as whilst the removal of problematic support material is certainly much easier with the C1, due to it melting the print slightly at the cutting points, some areas are arguably cleaner on the ones separated manually, though going over it on a second pass whilst focusing on cutting the print and not recording a video, this is probably something the C1 could clean up fairly well. You can also use it to cut away imperfections and clean up messy areas from your prints, but whilst that can be done with more traditional tools, this can also be used to cut straight through the print itself. As a test here, I have two Lego bricks which I've accidentally printed too close to one another and so they fuse together in the print. Separating these normally would be a bit of a nightmare, especially if you wanted a nice clean finish, but with the C1, it was a fairly simple job to just cut them in two. The only real issue that you're going to run into using the C1 to cut away support material and imperfections from your prints is despite it being a lightweight and pretty compact unit, despite having a solid metal frame and rubberized grip there, um, it's still nowhere near as compact or lightweight as an actual scalpel. So if you've got some support material or an imperfection that's somewhere through a gap in your print, this is likely not going to be able to fit in there, whereas this can. But for most use cases, this is probably going to reach what you need and do a better job than this. Now, I've only really got two main criticisms of this. The first I mentioned earlier, the charging. Whilst I also said that my experience of the charging may be partly down to the power brick I'm using, even the advertised speed of two hours feels a little slow to me. Uh, hand boost if you're watching, I would love to see this going from 0 to 100% in an hour or less, that would be great. The other is a small one, but whilst it comes with this blade protector cap and this great little storage case, the C1 doesn't fit in the storage case when it's got the protector cap fitted. This isn't a huge issue as the blade is obviously out of harm's way whether it has the cap on or if it's just in the case. And worst case scenario, I could just design and print a new case. But hand boost, if you're listening, here's some tips for the C2. It definitely can be really useful, but it's going to take some practice, and it's certainly not a magic wand that will just solve all of your problems. But it can help with a lot of situations that would otherwise be very challenging or time consuming. It's certainly not at all for every situation, and you definitely want to be careful and get some practice with it so you don't melt your prints that you're cutting. But if used correctly, it can also make a really easy job out of something that would otherwise be an absolute nightmare with traditional tools. On the whole, I think the Handboost C1 is a great tool to add to your maker's arsenal, and I'm definitely going to be designing a mount to whack this on my tool wall. Whilst Handboost is an established company with some known products out already, as seems to be a common trend these days, I presume as a way to gauge genuine market interest before investing in a new product line, the C1 is currently a Kickstarter campaign. Though it was fully funded back in December last year, and whilst it's not yet marked as in stock on the official website, I believe that you can still get them with the early bird discount prices on their Kickstarter page. Whether or not you want one of these now, I hope you found that interesting. Let me know in the comments if you can think of any other really good use cases for this in the world of 3D printing or the general maker kingdom. For now though, as always, thanks very much everyone and until next time, happy printing. So what do you think? It's not at all I think I'll ever plan on using, but I can see myself using it all the time now. For now, why not pop on one of my other videos to learn something new or have some fun. Thanks very much everyone and until next time, Happy printing.